Hi everybody, I'm Axel Wilkinson, and I'm really excited to show you one of the great new features of HitFilm 2. 3D Extruded Text is a feature that you guys have requested a lot, so we made adding it into version 2 of HitFilm a priority. You can actually extrude any 2D layer, not just text, but let's take a look at it with some text. So first, let's create some text to work with. Now, we want the extrusion effect. Now you may have noticed that there's been some reorganizing of the effects panel in HitFilm 2. Hopefully, this has made things easier to find. But if at first you have trouble finding things because you're used to the old system, the Find box is great while you adjust to the improvements. So we just start typing in the name of the effect we're after. There it is. We'll drag our 3D extrusion onto our text layer. And done. We instantly have our extrusion there. It's got some nice shading on it. And in the controls panel, we can use the depth slider now to control how deep that extrusion is. Now if we grab our selection tool and drag this layer around, you can see how the extrusion, the shape of it updates based on the location of the layer. But at this point, our text layer is still 2D. So you might be wondering how we can manipulate this effect in three dimensions. Well, we don't do it by simply converting to a 3D layer. Let's go ahead and try that and you can see what happens. Now if we adjust the transform controls, you can see this is still just a 3D plane. We haven't actually created depth in the layer because the extrusion is technically a 2D effect. And so that's not the way we want to do this. Let's go back. We'll undo that, go back to our 2D layer. And now if we open the position controls for the 3D extrusion effect, notice the transform from option, which lets us choose a layer to transform from. Therein lies the trick. You can use any layer you want pretty much, but in most cases I recommend using a point layer. So we'll create this new point, we'll convert it to 3D. Now, when we transform from this 3D point in our effect, we initially don't see a difference. But select the point and transform it, and you can see that immediately the text behaves like a 3D object. Awesome, right? So by simply controlling the effect with a 3D point using the transform from command, we can get it to act like a genuine 3D object. When we create our extrusion, we get some default shading, even though there are no 3D lights in the scene. But if we want to use 3D lights on our extruded layer, we can do so using the illumination controls. By default, the type is set to comp lights so that all the lights will affect our layer. But we can also use the selected light setting to limit the number of lights that affect our extrusion. We can also edit the material, like with any 3D layer, to control how the lights interact with the layer surface. We can also use an environment map with the extrusion, which is really awesome for making the object look like it is in a scene. I'm going to turn this cloudscape layer back on, and in the environment map we can choose a layer to be reflected onto the surface of the text. So when I choose the cloudscape layer, notice how the text is affected by the environment map. Now in this case, I was not smart, and the text is gray, which is kind of defeating our purpose here, so I'm going to change the color of that text back to white. Uh, I should have done that to begin with, but now, if I toggle the environment map off and then back on, you can really see the effect that it's having on our text there. So what's happening here is our selected layer, the clouds, is being mapped onto a sphere surrounding our object, and then the object will reflect that sphere. We have various controls to adjust how that reflection is handled. Pre-blur lets you soften the detail contained in the reflection, with zero being a mirror reflection. Amount controls the blend of the environment map with the object's original appearance, in this case the white. Angle dependency alters the specular quality of the layer, so that at higher values only certain angles will reflect the environment. If I turn that up, you can see now the front face is pretty much white again, but still the sides of the text are being affected by the environment map. If I adjust the amount, you can really see how much impact that's having. Texture scale lets you adjust the size of the reflection, uh, which can make it look like it's closer or farther from the object. And texture ratio lets you stretch the environment map along the x-axis. The default value of 1 on the texture ratio helps to avoid seams in the environment map, but if you are using 3D objects in your scene as well, then to match the 3D object environment maps, you should use a value of 2. The transform controls here alter the position of the sphere which is being reflected onto our layer. 
and thus give us control over which part of our environment map layer is mapped onto our object. By using the integrated Mocha tracking in HitFilm 2 Ultimate, you can easily track a 3D title into a scene as well. Let's look at an example of that that I've set up here. Here we have a camera pan going on, and you can see the 3D title is tracking exactly with that camera movement so that it fits into the scene. I've also used a couple of 3D lights in this scene, so as I toggle those lights on and off, you can see the effect that they have on our 3D text. So there's the new 3D extrude effect. I know you guys are going to have all kinds of fun with it. Thanks for watching, uh, but this is just one of the many new features found in HitFilm 2, and we'll have lots more videos looking at the other features coming up, so please subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, and that way you can make sure and catch all those videos as well.